Let's quickly do a farm review over angiotensin II receptor blockers, also known as ARBs. So whenever you see the name of this medication class, pay attention to that angiotensin II. We know from our previous lectures, like with the RAS system, angiotensin II is a substance when it's activated, it causes vasoconstriction all through your body. Well, if we're blocking its receptors, we're gonna get the opposite of that, vasodilation. So just remember that. So medications in this class include like Omasartan, Valsartan, Losartan, and notice at the end of these generic names, we have the word Sartan. So when you see Sartan, connect it with ARBs. Now, because these medications affect the activation of angiotensin II, they're really great at treating patients who have hypertension, high blood pressure, diabetic nephropathy. This is a chronic kidney disease that happens in patients who have diabetes, and ARBs can actually help protect their, their kidney function. So it can lower the blood pressure to the kidneys, which can decrease inflammation. We get decreased damage to the kidneys over time and the scarring and things that can happen. So it actually has a protective mechanism in it. It, these medications are also helpful with patients who have heart failure because they can lower the workload on the heart and patients who have peripheral arterial disease. So again, how ARBs work are that they are going to block the activation of angiotensin II receptor type 1 sites. This is going to prevent angiotensin II from binding to receptor sites. Now this is going to do a lot of things, but two things I want you to remember is that that's going to dilate the vessels instead of constrict them. And it's going to actually decrease the secretion of aldosterone. And aldosterone is a substance that helps really regulate your blood volume. It normally causes your body to keep water and sodium, which helps build up your blood volume and excrete potassium. But if we're decreasing aldosterone secretion, what we're gonna do is we're going to rid the body, so excrete our extra water and sodium, help decrease the blood volume, but we're gonna keep potassium. So because of how these medications work, they can cause the following side effects. Dizziness, hypotension, dropping that blood pressure too low, particularly if they have too much medication in their system, it can do this. It can also increase the potassium level, and that's because of how it affects aldosterone. And it can cause GI upset. And by the way, it seems like every medication can cause GI upset. So just always remember GI upset because most of that is gonna fall in these medication classes. And the nurse's role involves monitoring the potassium level because it can increase too high. So you really wanna watch that in patients who you know, are at risk for having kidney disease, like patients who have diabetes. You wanna look at that renal function, the BUN and creatinine, and you want to assess their blood pressure, making sure that they're not having hypotension. Now, one thing that can happen with this class, which is rare, but it could, is called angioedema. And this is where you get swelling in the face and in the lips and in the mouth and the throat. Now, just thinking about that, have you got swelling going up in this part of the body, what do we need to protect? The airway, because we can cut off airflow. Okay, so that wraps up this video over cardiac medications. If you'd like to watch more videos in this pharmacology series, you can access the link below.